Hi, it's Matt, founder of Bench. Here I am in the historical Maple Grove Schoolhouse. Uh, while the construction is going on outside, I figured I'd take some time and give you some background in terms of the history of the schoolhouse as well as history of the area. The school was built in 1944. It was the third Maple Grove Schoolhouse, the first one being built in 1832 and the second one in 1864. I've had a real great opportunity to learn the history of the area. There's been some really nice uh, folks at the Lincoln Archives learned, passionate historians who've been keeping the history of the town of Lincoln alive and been working very diligently at the Vineland Research Center. So we had the opportunity three weeks ago at the Jordan House in Jordan to sit down with them and learn a lot about the history. And here it is. We had the privilege to meet some of the new neighbors at the Jordan House Tavern to learn about the rich heritage of the Tony Valley in town of Lincoln. Many of our neighbors are also members of a club known as the Friends of Lincoln's History, a group of local historians dedicated to preserving the heritage of the town of Lincoln for current and future generations. It was a tremendous opportunity for us at Bench to hear firsthand about the incredible history of our local community, history that shaped our region and more importantly helped to shape our nation, starting with settlements in the 1780s and the amazing stories of the Loyalists. Well, the Niagara was first populated by Loyalists who were displaced from the states due to the American Revolution. They chose the wrong side. They chose a losing side, the British side, and uh, their loyalty remained until they were given 100 acres of trees to chop down. Uh, they all ended up as refugees at uh, Fort Niagara, pretty much, which is the, across the river from Niagara on the Lake. And uh, Britain didn't know what to do with them. Um, the, a lot of them were Butler's Rangers. They had been in the forces and they were refugees with their families at that fort. And so Britain agreed to let them come across this side of the river to the west side and start settling. And then over time they had to start over. So all Britain could give them was land. And she gave them free land grants. And uh, they started over. So that was the beginning of settlement here. Britain had an Indian department, <clears throat> and Sir uh, William Johnson was head of that, and John Butler was one of his uh, lieutenants. And uh, what happened was, uh, as the war progressed, he suggested he form a, a unit of basically farmers. They were like militia, uh, and form that unit. And they actually, what they did, they were based at Fort Niagara, and what they did was go out and burn and pillage and, and try to support the British cause during the revolution. Um, and so all of those Butler's Rangers, some of us are descended, some people here are descended from them, but uh, they were just average Joes. And many of their families were still back in New York State trying to survive with unfriendly neighbors. So it was a difficult time for all of them. But they ended up at Fort Niagara because that was their base and they went out from there to. But then when they disbanded, they were given lots of land yeah. over here. Yeah, they they were giving, Niagara. some of them were giving lots of land. The Hen, James Henry got yeah. 600 acres. Yeah. Including and, where the brewery is. Yeah. One man would own that. Then his children would get some of it, but still, can you imagine clearing 600 acres to make a viable farm out of it? They needed farmers. General Haldeman, he's invited Quakers and like societies to come up here to farm. So the Quakers were, um, they didn't want, they didn't fight. They had their own religion. They just wanted the freedoms and they offered the same things up here. So that's how the Mennonites came. They, the Quakers are up in the Pelham area. Mennonites came down here. That's how they got here. They came to farm because they were known as good farmers.